This week on Media Delta, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1987, Season 1. And just in time for this episode to go up, Wiki Title Singable to the TMNT theme song, Twitter account, has now been active again. Hooray! Hello and welcome to another episode of Media Delta. Uh, we have we are covering something rather popular this week. Uh, and it's actually kind of interesting because it's something that I've never seen before, despite my kind of, you know, I should say, I say that, but there are many things I have not watched. But uh, yeah, uh, we're talking about the original 1987 Ninja Teen- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. And uh, yeah, uh, a very popular show, especially when I was a child. Although I never really watch it for one reason or another. So uh, since we've taken a look at quite a few Ninja Turtles games, uh, let's actually dive into, you know, the show that made it popular. I know that there are comics that it's technically based on a comic, but um, most people are kind of familiar with the show uh, and the movies. Uh, Also, this is we are we have not quite reached talking about comics yet. Uh, We got to get there. So first, we got to talk about this cartoon. I was not the only one who watched this. So, uh, in alphabetic order, please introduce yourselves. Hi, this is Carnival. And yeah, it's nice to see something that I kind of expected, expected, like, going back to be horrified at, not horrify me. Uh, I am Coolio, Ninja Dentist for Hire. I am Portable Stove. You can find me at the Ninja Video Arcade. Hi, I'm Torpid Typist, and I'm here to see friends learn new things about themselves. Whoa! <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, I didn't realize how short the original first season of this was. Uh, it is only five episodes long. Um, and yeah, uh, it is a kind. Of, it's a in. It's actually kind of interesting because it's like not like I was expecting. Uh, kind of a, you know, like a show like this where it's like one episode is like not continu- uh, like continuous to another, but these actually all kind of, you know, mash together, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's not like something you can kind of skip through. You kind of need to watch all five episodes of this um, in order to kind of have it make sense. Um, so I guess with that, uh, let's actually get into our questions. So Carnival. Uh, What were your general impressions? Is there any particular element or scene that you'd like to bring up? Well, like I mentioned before, I... My knowledge mostly of this version of the Turtles is fairly limited other than some VHS that my aunt had in her house. But I was totally expecting this to be some 80s random cash-in show and was surprised by this was super solid and to a degree I was not expecting. And while I'm absolutely certain seasonal rot will set in very quickly once we get out of this, like, this. But the thing I like to bring up was, like, this was actually just a five-episode serialized story. And it's like, huh. I just was shocked that they pulled that, pulled that, and it was fairly solid all the way through. Is there any particular thing other than that that you'd like to talk about? The animation actually was better than I was expecting. Yeah, it it held up quite like we've seen some kind of budget animation and it like it's I'm not going to say it's like, say, like theatrical quality, but it is definitely not as bad. Uh, I didn't really notice any like errors or anything like that. I did, but they're pretty mundane. I can see everything. I mean, it's kind of weird when you look at Michelangelo, but you hear Raphael talking. Exactly. And it happens at least once an episode, and it just gets worse in later seasons. Please, save it for the second question so we can talk about how much the turtles blend together. <laughs> That's fine. Yep. Uh, so is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, not really. All right. Uh, cool, yo. Um... I actually like I, I'm I know that I've seen the first season at some point in my life, but I have absolutely no memory of this. Like most of my memory of watching the show must have been from season maybe two and three, honestly. 
Um, so it was actually really nice to see the first season, which is short, which works to its strength, honestly. And, um, you know, be able to see the entire setup of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and how they came to be and who is Shredder, who is Krang, who, is, who are all these people. Just kind of get to see how all of that gets built. Um, and also, like, since I, since I had never seen the first season, if you take the ending of season one, like the last episode in general, and match it against the ending of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the Nintendo, the first one, it kind of makes sense. Like, I, I was never able to reconcile the ending of the NES game until I watched this. And I was like, oh, that's why uh, uh, Splinter is able to return to his human form. I thought he had mutated from a rat, but no, he mutated down from a human into a rat. And Shredder had made that retromutagenic gun, which would allow him to return to being human. So all of a sudden, okay, that makes sense now. So that's pretty cool. Um, I also want to point out the, the theme song. It's mostly kind of standard fare as far as, you know, it's, uh, it's just describing what the show is and who's in it, more or less. But at the same time, it's a very iconic theme song. Even going so far as having an XKCD comic strip um, where they go through several Wikipedia titles that can be sung to the Ninja Turtles theme song and that evolving into a Twitter bot that does that automatically. You know, unfortunately, it's not working right now, but um, it has come up with hundreds and hundreds of various theme song, uh, various wiki titles that can be sung to the theme song. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to bring that up at one point, but yes, specifically for that bot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just basically a pandemeter. You could do the entire, which is, which is bit from Macbeth to that, say to the theme song and it works. <laughs> <laughs> Still though, I, I, I just admire that the bot is actually smart enough that it will recognize 1718 in music. Like one seven one eight in music to actually fit, so I, that just kind of came to mind. Some examples include a uh, problem of religious language, friendly corner Nova Scotia, Edward Humor Butler Senior, uh, two thousand ten in Kenyan football, um, or twenty ten, or twenty ten, uh, Volvo seven hundred series, <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, a, there's a lot of them. I absolutely love that bot, and it kind of sucks that it's not working right now. But My favorite go. one is them posting, ah, what rhymes with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> it had to happen eventually. Yeah. It works, it makes sense, don't worry about it. Yeah, so, I'm just looking at this Twitter right now. <laughs> um. I think that's more or less what I had to say. And also the fact that turtle voices get mixed up at least once per episode, and I've already said that. So that is uh, that is it for me for this question. All right. Uh, Stove. So honestly, even though I remember growing up being a like big fan of the turtles, I only really remember two episodes from the series. Uh, it's the, the one where they have the meatballs that turn into the big pizza monsters from Sewer Surfing in T uh, Turtles in Time. And the one where the scientist in this episode gets turned into the fly. Also from Turtles in Time. Um, so I don't actually, I never actually watched these particular five episodes. And I was stunned to find out how, like, how much I actually enjoyed them. Like, I think a lot of it's probably, um because it was so serialized and there's like, it's something that's easy to follow as well. I think like they're just, it's just the turtles trying to find the Technodrome and trying to help splinter and everything. It just felt kind of good. Um, in terms of any particular elements I want to bring up, uh, 
I do actually really like the theme song. Also, actually, other than the theme song, the thing that just gets me is it is it even though it's not like it has more effort put into it than say a He Man or a Transformers, you would say, in terms of this is a vehicle to sell toys. I just remember seeing like the tank or the technodrome or the turtle blimp and going, Oh shit, yeah, I had that as a kid. Like it's 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 nostalgic, but also it reminds you of the money that your parents spent on you to get yourself like a technodrome or something. Yeah, but I still love that that turtle van because they end up ultimately doing basically fucking nothing with it. I didn't realize they just boosted it from Baxter, honestly. One one problem I have with the turtle van is that the turtles are you know constantly trying to keep a low profile but how can you keep a low profile when you have a van with the turtles logo in front of it it's that was the more. best part because it was basically april's ride like they didn't actually use the turtle van that much themselves they probably just think of it as some weird guy's uh alternate take on a bitch and wizard van yeah no again it's new york it's no one is going to bat an eye at that <clears throat> fair enough yeah. Just kind of like the times when someone goes up, oh, they look at the turtles and go, oh, we got a lot of weird guys around here today. But yeah. yeah. No. Or like the, the old lady who threatened them with a gun. <laughs> yes. Just straight up pulls like a Tech 9 out of her cart, <laughs> like her grocery cart. I'm also and... surprised at how much shit they got away with, like in this fir- in these first five episodes. Rock uh, Rocksteady calls April a bimbo at some point. I'm like, what the fuck? Seriously? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. There, there are definitely some yikes moments in here, like, it, like especially in the first episode where they're explaining the Foot Clan as like, oh, that is an unfortunate yeah, caricature of Japanese there, culture. Yeah, there, there is a specific character too. Yeah, because the thing is, is that people like humans are drawn weird in this show. Uh, there is a one of the characters that show up with the sensei. Uh, a teacher in Japanese uh, thing. I forgot how they describe it. Like it, it, that whole entire bit with Splinter explaining his origin is really. You mean the Master Sensei? I think is what they called it. Yeah, except it's like they say a Japanese word and they explain what the Japanese word was. Uh, but there they come in. These two guys come in for the Sensei. Uh, there is a guy that looks almost like a caricature. But the he thing 100% is, one hundred percent looks like a racist yeah, caricature. But the, but the thing is, it's like okay. Was he just drawn like weird how everyone else looked? Or yikes. I feel Richie, there is one exception to that weird people rule, and that is April, who is mm. there's um, a reason I said one of my friends learned something about himself that day. <laughs> oh yeah. you know what? At at the expense of like of like myself, I guess. Uh no, I understand the uh I understand April O'Neil a little bit coming out of watching these five episodes. No, it's I, great. I My it. friend specifically said, Oh, I think I finally understand why I like Red X. <laughs> I think I realized where that came from. <laughs> but yeah, it's good stuff, honestly. Um I can't really speak to any other season, but you know, this is a good start. And I know it it gets a lot more cartoony and uh, episodical at some point, but this is a good start to the to the series. All right, um, Turbo. Uh, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Like I I had seen later episodes, so I went into this with very very low expectations. Uh, so I was genuinely surprised. I feel like the the consistent storyline between the five episodes, as other people said, like really helped it and keep it on track instead of just turning into some. Uh, Monster of the Week type deal, which it still kind of was, but at least it had something going for it. Uh, and yeah, there's also the very obvious attempts at, at fucking toys like the Turtle Van or the Turtle Blimp or the Technodrome. My god, the Technodrome looks fucking stupid. The Technodrome is great. What are you talking about? The Technodrome is stupid, curious. but I fucking love it. <laughs> that I can get behind. Yeah, it is incredibly impractical, but also uh, the most 80s ass cartoon thing. You could possibly get like also, how do we how do you make a Death Star underground? I still <laughs> love the massive tunnels beneath New York that it just kind of wandered through. You, you know the great caverns of New York. Yeah, the place with a lot of space in it, New York. Yeah, 
also i i, I love uh this being the the backstory where uh fucking splinter was a a originally a human so at some point they just see just show him chilling in the fucking sewers like it's no big thing and then it raises the question, like, he wants to go back to being human, but he'd still live in the sewers. And it's like, how would you, it's maybe not good for you or your constitution. Also, also, what, yeah, was say, also, what's great about that is the explanation, or in that explanation, uh, they describe the mutagen uh, transforms you into the animal uh, that you last contact, where they blatantly show, Shre uh, they show Splinter uh, holding the turtles. And then they say, well... The last thing he had touched was the rat. Yeah, that didn't quite follow, did it? Like, you just blatantly contradicted yourself. It's fine, and it's important to remember that that shit is the same stuff that made Daredevil go blind. Yep. Because uh, that's... <laughs> go on. It's always the great joke about, even back in the original Mirage comics, was the Foot Clan is also a take-up on Daredevil's villains, the, ha the hand. So... That's why this entire thing is just a joke on Daredevil. The Pui's Steffi clan. The foot <laughs> technique. <laughs> this is the technique of the foot. Also, I guess, like, everyone abandoned the foot clan, because, like, Shredder just employs robots, and I'm still not quite sure what's going on with that. That's they're, uh, they're not into it. Oh, uh, okay. They're not big on After that. a while, they just stopped being into it. But, yeah, yeah yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say like the yeah, that is probably why they it is how they can get rid away with uh the turtles like hitting things with actual weapons. Because that was and a thing that was destroying a, them. Yeah, that was a problem I remember with the movies about them actually like fighting like somewhat hu if I if I remember correctly, that is another thing that I have not seen. Uh but if I remember reading here like hearing about it, uh that the first Turtles movie got um like in a lot of troubled parents uh, groups because they were actually hitting uh, people with the weapons. But uh, that yeah, doesn't so surprise just, me. As meandering as this is, I, I actually pretty I, I enjoyed it. Uh, All right. The the thing I would bring up is April O'Neil, who just kind of exists <laughs> to be there, and uh, God, she's fucking built. I feel like, like I feel like April O'Neil is there to represent the viewers who are trying to figure out what is going on, and sometimes nothing makes sense. It's it's true, but also it's like they channeled all of their fucking horny energy into one character, so I could just draw character caricatures everywhere else. It's the most bizarre thing. Well, look, this just this is going to end up having the totally spice problem because. No! <laughs> Wait, okay, hold on. No, now I remember a different episode. Shit, thanks, Carnival. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking hell. But yeah, she, she's basically there to be the audience, but also it's like kind of interesting how she sticks out as A, being stacked, and B, being the only person that looks like a person. Who's constantly obsessed with getting a scoop, but never seems to up until literally the very end. And I guess she was just living in the sewers for a while despite having an apartment. And then everyone in that Straight apartment up. building dies. Straight up, no, it's like, because the way the story plays out, she stayed in the sewers with the turtles for three days. And finally had a shower, but then the entire fucking apartment building collapsed on itself. Yep. I can't help but Somebody wonder if anyone in this series has a sense of smell. Or a sense no. of taste, for that matter. Because, I mean, look at the pizzas that the turtles eat. They okay, make so no sense. Bold of you to assume that turtles taste like people. Wait, no. <laughs> but they have people taste buds. <laughs> okay, th I'll concede that. And fucking Splinter and his weird-ass sushi. Uh, also, uh, another thing that I have found... Uh, is an article from uh, LibertyCruise.nyc, uh, which is uh, every pizza in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ordered. Oh no! You got to put that in the oh, show geez. notes. <laughs> yeah, basically, I yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I just saw that end. I'm like, okay, <laughs> but yeah, no. So that's that's all I'll mention. Granola and licorice in episode 19, Beneath These Streets. 
What? Ugh. Oh, God. Hot. Uh, peanut butter and clams from episode 39, Green with Jealousy. Excuse me? Yeah. Also, I think marshmallow and pepperoni also came up. Like, that was an, a topping that was... Um... See, I'd be willing to try that one. See, I can understand Michelangelo liking a lot of these, uh, but not everyone else. <laughs> All right. Um, is, that, is that it, Torpo? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... Uh, this is, like I said, this is my first time actually watching this. Um, like, the series, period. Like, I never actually watched an episode before. That was all right. Like, it, like, especially compared to some of the crap that we've seen before, it's actually ain't bad. Like, I watched the first episode, and I don't know if it was just, like, ju- it ju- like if I just had was not, wasn't, like, in the right mindset for it. Uh, but I was like, okay, this seems like it's going to go south real quick. Uh, but then it actually, you know, started to get better in the later episodes. Like, uh, just started to get i started to like have fun with the show and yeah it was became much more enjoyable um also if the thing that i i would mention is that uh this show was in like the the like a golden era of like voice acting uh so you got to see like uh, or hear a lot of like familiar voice actor names or like voice actors actors and actresses uh like uh, it was really weird seeing tr- or hearing Trust Man- uh, Trust McNeil in like a couple of roles. Actually, if I yeah. think about it, Trust uh, McNeil. Uh, and like Rob Paulson and all that, and like it was also great to hear Rob Paulson actually act in a way that wasn't Antoine. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about Rob Paulson in a second. Yeah. All right. He was Raphael, wasn't he? He was Raphael. All right. Well, he was, at least he wasn't Antoine. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so yeah, a- actually, yeah. Speaking of the characters, uh, Turbo, let's move on to the next question. Um, how do you feel about how the because the turtles like I'm not super familiar with it, but one thing I have heard is that the characterizations for the turtles kind of change uh, depending upon the actual rendition. Uh, so how do you feel about the characterization of the characters found in this rendition? Oh boy. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna hold off on the turtles for last because I have opinions on them. But yeah, Splinter is just kind of teacher, fucking stereotype also. But you know, uh, then Shredder is basically a petulant fucking child the whole way through. It's kind of incredible. Just a gigantic fucking baby, and I love it. I don't want to conquer this place. I want to conquer <laughs> Earth. God, also, it's great because just remembering who voices Shredder in this. Oh yes, who is uh, it? Uh, James er, was it James Avery? Yep. Yes. Uh, AKA uh, Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Like you do. Yep. <laughs> but and no, it's. Can- uh, across the entire series, he's one of like I think five or so voice actors who does Shredder. He's he's the one who does it the longest, but Shredder's voice does change several times. God, that was like an early internet thing too. Just like people yelling, "Uncle Phil was the Shredder!" Holy shit! I just turned into dust. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to the past. Enjoy your stay. <sighs> How's it feel to be ancient? But, uh, so yeah, no, I I actually really like this version of the Shredder, because he's not, like, super cop or anything. He's just like, oh man, I really want to beat up Splinter. I just really want to do it. To the point where he consistently, like, puts off helping Krang take over the world, because he's like, but I want to kill the Shredder! (laughs) I want to kill Splinter! Just the whole fucking time. And literally the only reason he acquiesces to Krang's bullshit is because Krang promises to beat up Splinter for him. It's so good. Also, Krang is comedically evil, though I do like actually one bit uh, where Michelangelo is in trouble. And Krang at this point, having been repeatedly denied his fucking body uh, by Shredder, decides, you know what, I'm going to help them get out just to fuck over Shredder so he'll give me a goddamn body. And it was honestly pretty good. And then he just goes back to being comedically evil. Like, I I thought it was probably the most interesting thing Krang did, and then he just kind of stops. And just, it's just, yeah. 
And then, uh, honestly, April O'Neil is pretty one note. Like, yeah, she's obviously there for the audience to help them understand. But, like, as an actual character, it's always about, where's my fucking scoop? I need a scoop. Give me a scoop. To the point where she blackmails the news station repeatedly and still doesn't get her scoop until the very end. Look, I love that. It's like, no, fuck you. I am in charge here. I have a turtle death ray. Also, I, I, while you were listening, or while you were uh, mentioning that, I was looking up uh, on IMDb to, just to see what some of the other voice actors are. Uh, and I was looking up uh, Splinter's voice actor, uh, who is Peter Renaday. Uh, and one of the voices that he did, now that, I've, now that I like hear it, uh, that's now all I'm going to hear, uh, is uh, Splinter's, or Peter Faraday, had also done uh, Richard Ames from Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh, good. Oh, God. Wait, is that I killed my that, soul guy? That's, that's the... No, that is Peter Stillman. Uh, no, Richard Ames is the uh, guy with the pacemaker. Oh, God. The president. Oh, God. Yeah, the, the fucking president. Yep. Uh, which is really good. Tell me... God, fucking tell me about the Patriots. Oh. <laughs> Splinter, what do you know about the Patriots? Why, Splinter, I don't care about the Patriots. Just let me eat my fucking pizza. <laughs> Jesus. Tell me about the Patriots later. Oh, my God. But, uh, just, yeah, so those are the, the big characters. Bebop and Rocksteady exist to be nothing but walls of meat. And then the turtles are completely fucking interchangeable, and half the time I forgot who was who. To the point where they would literally speak out of each other's mouths, and Raph had no personality whatsoever. <laughs> Look, but they had their weapons. That's how you're supposed to know. <laughs> ah, shit, you're right. Like, yep. that's the funny thing. Like, the Turtles didn't actually have really super defined personalities until the 2003 show. Like, legitimately. They didn't get, like, good characterization until the 2003 show. This one was the one that actually gave started made, made minor things where you could tell them apart for, like, the otherwise, but in the original Mirage comic book, all you had to tell them different part was the weapon. That was it. Because the comics yeah. were also in black and white, so... And when they were in color, they all wore red. Yeah. It's also great, because it's like you have, the, you have the intro, which does the thing where it's like it introduces all the characters. Uh, like, it, it specifically mentions Santello does machines. Does not do a single machine in this entire thing, if I remember correctly. No, no, no. He makes the look, but he makes the van. He fucking boosts that goddamn van. <laughs> All right. That van? I'm going to take that. I need that. Really good, actually. <laughs> also, it checks out the flying cars like we need plutonium, and then they just fucking ditch it in the middle of the road. <laughs> By the way, how did they get the van up the stairs? Don't worry. They pushed it. Carefully. They pushed it up there, yeah. How, why, is this, why is the stairwell big enough for a van? <laughs> Who knows? It's New Who York. Knows? Who knows? Yeah. Okay, fine. Super accessibility. I expected a lot of foot traffic. <laughs> I guess so. Um, all right. Uh, so are you good, Torpo? Yeah, I'm good. That's that's basically everyone. All right. Uh, so. Um, so as much as I like the villains, I think it's one of those things where they're just kind of they try to be intimidating, but mostly they're just there for comedic relief when the uh, heroes aren't on screen. So it's like, everyone is an incompetent fool, especially uh, Bebop and Rocksteady, but especially Shredder, but especially Krang. So it just keeps on going up and up and up um, to the point that, yeah, as Torpo said, Shredder is just like a petulant child at, child at, the, end of the, at the end of the season. Um, and yeah, there's not really much to april she just she's there pretty much just comment on the plot and try to get her scoop and never accomplishing that i will say um the turtles in how they interact with each other are kind of like super boring holy shit i hate Raphael so much like okay i i always thought like kind of as somebody who's like peeking into uh like everything going on with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the past like 15 years that um 
there was a strong effort to push out Leonardo, who, to be fair, is very boring in the show. Um, there is a very funny moment that I think of when um, they're in the like flying jet cars or whatever, and they're plumbing it to the plumbing. Ding, eh, they're plummeting to the ground. And Leonardo just very calmly says, pull up the wheel, Michelangelo. That Like if that, if that was his personality, he's like constantly like cool under any type of really ridiculous pressure. That'd be fine. But as it is, he's boring. Uh, but there was a concerted effort to push him out uh, being the leader and push Raphael in. And all I could think of is Raphael just continuously telling sarcastic jokes and uh, ostensibly being Sonic from the Sonic cartoons we watched. It is unbearable. Like, I would have expected Michelangelo to be more annoying than he is. But at worst, he just has the, you know, Californian accent. That's all he's got. So I don't know. The I, mildest party boy you've ever fucking met. Right, yeah. So, eh. I, I enjoy the characters from like a, from like a nostalgic standpoint. I, for some reason, even though he is the like most inept villain <laughs> um, ever, and he was like made to be an inept villain, by the way, he dies in the first fucking car, uh, comic. I still love Shredder so much. Like Shredder, I think is, has the potential to be very cool, even if he's not like the super grim dark two thousand three Shredder. Um, two thousand three super grim dark. Eh, it's about as grim dark as the turtles get. Yeah, uh, without going to like f- fucking I don't know the if the uh, first movie didn't like let up on or if the first movie stopped telling jokes like completely during the second half of it. But I think that's we'll talk fair. about that some other time. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got on the characters. It's 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 a good ensemble, but just don't go looking for personality there. All right. Uh, the uh, Coolio. Um. Well, a lot has already been said. Um. I would say, uh, as far as the turtles go, it's like. Yes, Leo is boring, but he's also as close to a voice of reason as you get in the Turtles. And sometimes you do kind of need that. It doesn't really come up a whole lot, at least in the first season. I haven't I haven't seen a whole lot of the other seasons to really have much of an opinion on that. Um I've been watching through season two a little bit with a friend of mine, so that's it. It, it yeah, um, yeah. Don, Donatello, well, he he is the machinist of the group, and he is the smartest, and it shows. Uh, but uh, again, doesn't really stand out a whole lot. Michelangelo's the jokey one, and then. Raphael is also the jokey one, and I don't know why there are two jokey ones. Like one, one of them is more laid back, and the other one is Raphael. Raph is the sarcastic one. I remember being said at one point. Oh yes, uh, I remember. Um, at one point, they tie up a bad guy, and it's like, if you don't tell us what we want to know, I'm gonna get sarcastic. It's like, aren't you always? That is your default state of being, Raphael. Yeah, but like um, even more so, like pure passive aggression. <laughs> also, one thing that, that I do want to point out is that by this time, all of the Turtles' nicknames, so Leo, Donnie, Raph, and Mikey, had been established, and they are never used in this show. Not once. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that is definitely a thing. But as far as the other characters... Uh, a lot has already been said. I guess I just mostly wanted to look at the turtles since they've they tended to to get uh, kind of balled up into one so far. And there's yeah, you know, it's reasonable to do that since they are bare bones at best. But that's what I gotta say. All right, Garvel. So like everyone jokes is like April being for her characterization being like uh. Reporter, that's the funny thing is, that was changed for this show. April was a scientist who either is working under Stock, under Baxter Stockman or 
and, and as a, and as a result was originally caring for the turtles before they got dumped to the sewers, which is just like it's kind of funny to me because this is the version most people remember when it was this is like the no wait what <laughs> oh my god you fucking nerd i am going to be a nerd so fuck off you fucking nerd i actually did not know that success but <laughs> yeah like even as as previous established like i don't like actual good characterization of the turtles having personality really didn't show up to the 2003 show so it's like yeah it's kind of interesting going back to this and just seeing like huh just the kind of just changes in tone and characterization just because it's like the difference between the original comics was like this kind of like the joke is how seriously they're taking it versus this show is just like no we're just gonna lean into how stupid this is and not try and look back so that's every every time there's a new version of the show though that's exactly what they do it's like they they change they tweak everything slightly. It's never the same story, and it's always different levels of serious. Like yeah, and that's good because like we have a good core concept here. We have enough where we can go as much high magic or high science as we want. It's like yeah, we just get to take our own do our own takes on it, and it's like it works. It usually works very well, except for that one live action show that got a crossover with Power Rangers. Oh jeez. Wasn't that I, the one I where they introduced? Need... Wasn't that the one where they introduced Venus to Milo? Yes. I still need to to check that out just out of morbid curiosity. It's bad. It from everything I've heard, it's like bad. But yeah, I'm not on that. But all right. Uh, like I, I, as I said, I haven't watched this. My entire uh familiarity with turtles comes with the video games. Uh, I could not tell any of them apart. Like, they they didn't, like, obviously, I mean, obviously, I can tell them apart visually. Uh, but character, like, characterization-wise, uh, they might as well have been the same. At least in this early season. But then again, there's only five episodes. So, yeah, they could have done a bit better on that part. Uh, I was surprised at how whiny Shredder was. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I didn't, I did not remember that at all. Uh, also, Krang was... You know how I expected Krang to be. Uh, April, I was not expecting to be, uh, at least at first, uh, kind of an idiot, because uh, she just goes into the the turtles' lair in the or she ends up trying to run from uh, some of Shredder's goons and uh, ends up being saved by the turtles. He wakes up is like, oh. Also, I just wanted to point out uh, in the beginning thing uh, when they specifically use the phrase. Uh, these marks can only be made by a samurai sword. Oh, for fuck's sake, I forgot. Oh, right. uh, yep, that's so good. Okay. Uh, also, the rope that had the big ass Japan label on it. <laughs> that's how they knew it was ninjas, because the rope was from Japan. Uh, uh, no. Uh, the Those eighties. are specifically the two reasons they were saying they were ninja crimes on the news. It was great. Also, the ninja, uh, the ninja street was also choice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, also, yeah. the thing I was saying though is like, um, yeah, April is like the says about the ninja. It's like, oh yeah, we rescued you. Uh, oh, obviously you turtles must be the one that's doing all these crimes. Yeah. Like what the fuck is I that? I mean, it's a safe bet given all the ninja crime, but also it's stupid. It's. I mean, maybe she hadn't pieced everything together yet because she had, you know, after seeing the turtle, she proceeded to faint multiple times. Also important to know, she did not, like, know about the foot gland. Yeah, like, let's be fair, she was not operating off of full information. The steppy ninjas, if you would. (laughs) You're never gonna let that go. Hell no! It's the foot (laughs) technique, Carnival, all right? Also, uh, the fact that you've probably been playing a lot of Sinnoh has not helped. Okay, first off, fuck <laughs> you. I don't need to be called out like this. <laughs> Look, I've also been playing it a lot lately, so I understand the feeling. I got Cinderella and all's right with the world. <laughs> all right. But yes, that was, that was my general impressions of the characterizations of all the characters. 
So uh, I think this got brought up a little bit earlier, but um, this especially it's kind of weird for a cartoon of this type. Uh, Carnival, how do you feel about the episodes having like a, like a continuity between them? That saved the season, honestly. Like the fact that this had a strong continuity of like, no, all these episodes happened over the course of a week and just all events directly lead to one another. Took this from like actually made this entertaining to watch because it's like oh, wow, everyone is acting in a way that's, like, this has a logical through line throughout the entire time, and it was refreshing to watch from something of this age and not because, like, yes, other 80s cartoons, especially, like, Transformers during its fourth season after they had the movie, had a bigger, like, continuous plot thread, but it was something shocking to see just because that's not the norm of shows of this era. Because it was built for the, we gotta get the syndication so we can keep this going forever. Like, we have proof of that with just the Sonic shows we've seen. So yeah. I would think that having this strong continuity with this first five episodes that are that's going to probably be quickly abandoned, but was nice, refreshing to see, and helped this a lot. Okay. Uh, anything to add? Okay. Uh, cool, yeah. Um, well, it, it does kind of result in it being a very short season i don't know if they were planning on five episodes or what like i don't know what exactly their plan was i'm not a clairvoyant but uh, as far as having this continuity across these five episodes it definitely helps it i mean you have an interesting storyline you get to learn like the origins and follow an actual story that reaches an actual ending and does so pretty quickly so and like uh like carnival said it's kind of it's kind of atypical from this time because a lot of the uh children's animated shows are built in such a way that you can just kind of randomly pick and choose various episodes and it doesn't really matter what you end up with because you don't have to follow a story with the with these five episodes, yes, you do have to follow the story because you know every episode leads directly into the next one. But it just makes for a set of strong episodes that doesn't really get carried over into future uh, into future seasons because the next season is you know a weekly show with uh, thirteen episodes. Next season after that is a weekday show with at least 50 episodes and yeah that just kind of the quality just kind of crumbles at that point actually specifically 47 47 okay but um yeah uh it it does help um in this case i would say okay uh stuff honestly it absolutely helped um yeah, because when you get to the point where you have to make it episodic, it just starts to... You can immediately feel the quality kind of going downhill. I know there was a concerted effort to make the series itself um, like much darker towards the end. But like this is still a li- this is still lighthearted. Um, like I said kind of before, um, it's, it's an easy enough story to follow that the Turtles just want to get to the Technodrome, but I like every single beat that they get to along the way and also some things happen that just are permanent throughout the entire series like you know the creation of um uh bebop and rocksteady and then introducing baxter who introduces the the uh, turtle van and a place where donatello can make the turtle blimp so i i just really like that i like being able to look back and uh see that there's just a coherent story here before it all goes off the rails and I guess one like long term thing of this as well is that they're strongly introducing Shredder and Krang and Dimension X. And that's good, but also the realization that, all right, well, that's going to be your villains for the next uh, 60 episodes. Hope you can find enough things for them to do. Except, you know, there's there's other villains in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but like how many people know about Leatherhead and Rat King and uh, Armagon? you know those guys i do i know because of teenage mutant ninja turtles tournament fighters well yeah that's (laughs) well yes but we're also nerds so you know there's that 
speak for yourself, I say, after talking about VTubers. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're never going to see a movie... You're not going to see a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that, like, the main villain is Rat King or anything like that. Um, Yeah, no, I enjoyed the episodes having continuity. It's a nice welcome change from pretty much every other 80s cartoon of the time. All right. Uh, Torpo. And I've said it before, but I actually do really think the the consistent plot thread uh, really helped uh, the story, like, helped make it more interesting and keep the story along. Even in probably the weakest episode where they just summon a bunch of fucking hot rodders from Dimension X and that whole thing felt really weird, especially because one of them fell for a turtle and it was deeply confusing for everyone involved. And honestly... I, I feel like the turtles are being, well, uh, at least a couple of them are being really creepy toward Kala. Yeah. Like, we won't let anything happen to you, just continuously telling them that. It's like, okay, we get it. Stop now. But uh, just, I, I don't know. I felt like that was like the most throwaway episode. I guess because none of the characters actually stuck with me. Uh, though I will say that did have the most exposition for whatever that's worth. No, otherwise, though, I actually do feel like it really helped, like even keep that episode on the rails at the very least. Hmm. So yeah. Before we go on, I do want to note I was I was I looked ahead in like the Wikipedia listing, so of just the next season, it looks like there's a weird combination of there's a combination of like through of a through line, but there's it still goes to more episode of the week things, but there are like sprinklings of a through line. So. Hmm. Yeah, that that'll actually, uh, that'll that that actually changes what how I sort of list. Yeah, uh, I I I liked how it was one continuous thing, especially since it's like only five. Uh, if it was a full fourteen of a continuous storyline, then I feel like that might be a bit much. But since this was a shorter season, uh, I do feel like it actually kind of helped. I really don't have much else to say about that. I, I just thought it it that was nice. Yeah, there's not enough time for everything to get drawn out, which is a good a good length for it. Yep. Uh, so, uh, with that, I think we've kind of actually tar- talked enough uh, about this show that we can actually probably uh, actually rank this. So, we are going to rank this with our normal 1 to 21 scale, uh, with 1 being absolute mastercraft, very little can be done to make it better, uh, to 21, which is complete and utter garbage. Uh, not even fun, ironically, to watch. Uh, so, uh, with that, uh, Carnival, what would you give this numerically? I'm thinking between a, uh, let's see, I would probably say like a nine to, like a eight between, yeah, between a nine to five, not not five, six, somewhere between uh, there. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. I was looking for other uh, American cartoons to rank this against. The highest ranked American cartoon right now, like American TV show cartoon, is The Legend of Zelda at 17. Well, maybe that so, should get better. Blame the weeds. So definitely higher than that. Um, I would put it at or around 8. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I would say, I would say, um, I'd give it an 8. Like I think I think it is very good, but it's also just like them starting something and it might not continue being quite as good as um as it as it is now, sensibly. But I don't know. I think the first season is pretty good. It just has, you know, a few errors that keeps it from like moving up to Spark of Genius. So maybe eight. All right. Uh Torpo. You know, I, I've given you a piece of advice before about not needing to fill a slot just because it's empty, but I will say eight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, coincidentally, uh, another uh, a comparison for game-wise uh, that is eight, uh, which is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the arcade. Oh. Yeah. It's also an eight. Hey, uh, real quick, I actually had no idea. I honestly should have figured, but I had no idea that so many music cues actually came from the animated show. Like in the arcade, like the yep, yeah, like the uh, little jingle that plays after Shredder jumps out of the window with April. I had, I didn't know that was actually from the cartoon. Yeah, I mean, it also would make a lot more sense because they're in like that first that 
the the attract screen for that first arcade game was the intro of the show. Like it was a game rendition of that intro. Uh, it also it was also a thing that I also kind of find kind of funny is that for the console ports of Turtles in Time and probably Hyperstone Heist as well, uh, there is actually an option to change the coloring of the characters to have more have the colors be more accurate to the comic or the show. Uh, which is weird because they all were red in the comic, but nonetheless, uh, I thought that was an interesting kind of thing. Oh, uh, here's, no, here's another interesting bit. Uh, Chuck Lore, who is one of the people who uh, worked on the music for the show and also composed the lyrics for the theme song, that was his first TV credit. Huh. Really? Yeah. Let's say, it's just the only other thing that I could think of is. I can't remember. I, I can't remember if this is the apocryphal one or if it's the one that was actually true. Uh, but James Lipton, uh, who is, you know, the if you're not familiar with who James Lipton is, he is uh, kind of, I guess, more modern, like more known now uh, for being uh, the composer of, or it might not be the composer, but he is the host. He was, well, Forgot was the host of uh, Inside the Actor Studio in a very distinct kind of uh, look in, uh, like, he had a very distinctive, like, style to him. Um, okay, I'm guessing that this is apocryphal. Uh, but it's always been, like, there's always been a rumor that he was the one who composed the theme song to Thundercats. I think that's an apocryphal one, though. Yeah, that sounds about it. Uh, I need to look that up now. I will say as well, um, one thing that oh, I... Actually, it is not. It is not true. Okay. <laughs> um, one thing that's actually interesting, if you uh, if you have Netflix, there's an episode of The Toys That Made Us about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it is... It's very interesting. It shows, like... It has interviews with Eastman and Laird, and it goes over, you know, the, fu- the foundation of the comic, but also the foundation of the TV show... What I'd like to remember is, and I forgot to bring this up, I get the feeling this was more meant to be like a five-episode special thing, not necessarily a, this is the grounds for a hit TV show or whatever. Because I think they were trying to get their foot in the door, and then once the five episodes were up, well, it turned out to be a hit, and off to the races they went. So yeah, uh, The Toys That Made Us, if you want to confirm that story for yourself, because I don't remember. I'll believe it. Yeah, that believes that I would totally believe that this was just a pilot because this is this quality was way too good for this just to. Uh, it, apparently, according to Wikipedia, that this was actually animated by Toei, who also did the intro. So this is not yet an American cartoon. All right, well, eight did. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, because, or would you have to say something? I was gonna just say, my God, Toei actually spent money on something. Ah, uh, well, they used to. No, yeah. no, no, they, they never did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was actually, I didn't quite know where I was going to put this. Like, initially, uh, I actually was kind of more waiting to hear what your all opinion was to kind of help guide. Because I was thinking, like, it's definitely good. Like, uh, I would definitely put it in, like, the blue or green region. Uh, maybe oh, even indigo. If luckily there's this nice hole that needs filling. Yes. Uh <laughs> we in fact do not have anything at eight. And yes, I know do not put anything into eight that you're into a number that specifically needs a hole. Uh but just a kind of comparison. Uh, a comparison. Uh yeah, because at seven we have Nick Arcade, uh the running man, Tron, and East Two. Uh which I would say I would much rather uh even though I know some of those are contentious, I would still rather watch the running man than uh also, the same with East 2 and like Nick Arcade. Uh, and I would probably rather watch this than the Area 88 OVA or the Street Fighter live action movie. Uh, yeah. So, 8, I feel, is we finally have an 8, which uh, at this point means that we are only missing, uh, I believe, 12 and 13. Also, 16. And 16. Um, so, and also two of the specialty ranks, but we'll get to those. Oh, we'll get there. I, I would say I 
I'm trying to think of a like a show that could fit into either of them. Oh, Lolo, like <laughs> we can find those. Yeah, River Rank, Fantastic Planet. I bet that going in four twenty. Yes, have we done uh, Fantastic Planet game? No, there, I don't. There is not a Fantastic Planet game unless we want to count LSD for that. That is a weird ass move. Oh, not. Not Forbidden yeah, Planet. He is the paprika, duh. Uh, Fantastic Planet, the weird French animated movie. Not oh, the oh, you're old, right, you're right. I... Not not the old classic space one. Stand that... by what I said. Uh, yes, yeah, Papri- paprika is good though, so that'll not get a. That's not either a sixty nine or a four twenty. Paprika yeah. will destroy this list. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and we are up to episode thirty five. This is came out in nineteen eighty seven. Not nineteen eighty seven. Uh, oh, shit! This came out the same year as fucking Megaton did. God. Yeah. Uh, also, Salamander OVA. Also, The Running Man. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's time be weird. That was a TV show. Uh Let me say this, this is secure kids. kids. This is kids. This is one hundred percent kids. Uh. Is it technically based on a license if it's it's based yes, on it's a comic? Yes, it's absolutely based on a license if it's a yeah. comic. We, I don't. We, well, okay. I feel like that's a different beast entirely, though. You're right. But, you're right. Because I was gonna but, say, did we do that for Batman? But then it's, we did. It's, so. I was gonna say it's it's less of like a cash in, more of an adaptation. But yeah, the, the thing that I'm wondering though, and it might be one thing to think about for this particular, because for for Retro and Crapsody, it means like that it's based on something. Therefore, the game was made to be based on the show. I think for the show, I wonder if maybe we should think about having the dollar signs tone uh, be considered that are for basically just toy driven stuff. Well, yeah. absolute. Well, if we're yeah. going to be fair, this is kind of toy driven. Yeah, this no, like, toy driven. Yeah, but I'm trying to think about it because just considering like. Also, to be fair, this doesn't even something? really pull that heavily from the original material, but. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like, are we but are we considering it just solely on the? Are we counting this season itself, or are we counting on? I think this in general. Okay. Oh, the one hundred percent dollar signs. Yeah, if it's if it's in general, then hundred percent dollar signs. But if it's just yeah. season, it's one season, that then we can that changes things. Yeah, because I bet you the toys were even thinking at this concept. Like the only two things that were super like this is a, there's a toy of this are the turtles, which don't count because characters get toys, but the 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 van and the and the blimp but yeah um so with that uh is there anything we want to call out for music charm cinematography storytelling action or art and let me just go ahead and put something for music yeah no look i say we have to i don't know what but we have to call something because because yeah, we, we need there needs to be like a fucking widget for like a catchy opening. Uh, yeah, we, we, have, we have earworm. Then absolutely, yeah. because this has made the thing that everyone remembers. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I'd say there's nothing particularly notable. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, not anything. Well, the the st- the story's pretty good. I don't know if you want to point that out at all. The and the story's that, okay, but I wouldn't consider it exceptional. Yeah, yeah the okay. thing about it is that I would say in comparison to some of this other thing, like some of the other things, I would say maybe not, but okay. yeah. Um, do, we, do we want to point out it's, it, it is a little yikes yet a couple of points? The problem with it, this is that is there a threshold that we have to break? Is there a yikes threshold? Because <laughs> the thing is, if you put that threshold very low, uh, we're gonna have a lot of stuff that's why. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, like, it doesn't do anything exceptionally terrible, even if there's some really questionable shit. Okay. And, like, some of that is just word choice that happens as a natural result of linguistic drift, and it's like none of those were, like, deliberate slurs that have become, like, that are slurs. It's more of just there's a weird it's not like this is egregious oh, we have to warn this. It's like I suppose, I suppose it, it is kind of weighted toward the first episode, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like also the stuff like the the weird design on that one guy, like that is a thing where it's in the realm of possibility that that was just a weird design choice. Like, like yeah, that's the thing is like because everyone else is drawn such in a stylized manner. It's like 
I even said this when I, we were watching is like, it's bad. It's a bad thing regardless, but it's like, I can't, it's everyone not, else is drawn such a way. It's like, I think this is just an unfortunate accident than rather a deliberate, like. It, it is the fact that that is, there are multiple Japanese people shown on screen. Uh, not all of them, like that is just that one guy. Yeah. Who's meant to look a little dweeby. Because it is like he's acting a little dweeby, but it's again, it's like it, a, it's a weird. Yeah, so I would not put why. Fair. Uh, it's not like like just comparison. Some of the other things and why. Uh, Batman nineteen eighty nine. Uh, Mega Mega Ten. Yeah, that 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 one. I think I forgot exactly what the why up for that one was. Uh, There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that there's a lot of things. I think was it was it the the the, the rape? Uh, no, because or possibly because I think at that point, uh, wouldn't that just be that, H plus? We, H plus, and also uh, the fact that we, I I am still need to think of a letter for that. Uh, but like uh, just another comparison, Little Nemo. You got flips design, which was outward, just blatantly yeah. racist. Yeah, uh, you got the Street Fighter live action cartoon. Or not live action cartoon, like a uh, live action movie. Uh, live and, action cartoons. Yeah, I mean it's Roger Rabbit. Uh, Road to El Dorado, <laughs> perfect example of why something will get a why. Uh, Bugs Bunny Road Runner movie, those old car. Oh, that like genie cartoon. Uh, I would not call that this or this yeah. that. Um, for yay or nay, I can't really think of anything. Uh, charm. I would honestly, I genuinely oh. thought this was. It was. Charming. Well, would we give that? I a had fun, charming? but I wouldn't call it charming. Do we? Do we have a charm for this? Was this? This was fun. Then. I mean, we have one for simply fun, but I feel like that's like for very basic stuff that turns out to be kind of fun. True. I don't actually. Did I keep simply fun for? Uh, I would say probably length under yeah. gay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, under length. Game Center CX is simply fun, and also Ghost in the Shell. Uh, no, a Dirty Pair. I would not put this on the same simply fun as uh, Dirty Pair. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Seeing what we. But yeah, the the length definitely works well for it. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anything else? We put an R in nay for Raphael. <laughs> uh. God. Also, it's great because Raphael. I was, gonna, I was gonna say, is there emojis for like the like works of art? Uh, but then I remembered, I can't exactly remember of what a, a piece of art that Raphael did. Uh, I, I, if there is one criticism I can levy at this that just like makes it hard for me to go back to this, man, those jokes are really bad. Yeah, it yeah. is very jokey. It just continuously spewing out jokes like. <laughs> 90% of the time. Let's see. Let me look at the charms. That might be something for that. Um, what to do? I would say, boy, this was the XDs, wasn't it? Wasn't doesn't really count because it's not like. No. Nah, because again, this also ran like to '96. So, well, this season, but it's like it's another anything that was like super like this is '80s. Yeah, so some bits of it were products of its time, but it's not really stand out. 80s or 90s material and i'm not i'm not married to the idea of putting anything in a there honestly yeah it's, yeah i think it's fine to leave it empty yeah yes. i think we leave it empty. okay so yeah there is season one of teenage mutant ninja turtles cartoon uh this actually leaves me actually has me pondering something because i did not i kind of forgot that season one was so short uh so we have a second uh a second teenage mutant ninja turtles slot uh, that was going to be devoted to the second half of us watching this. Uh, the thing is, is that season two is 14 episodes, uh, which that means if we want, like, in order to have a standard viewing session, uh, usually try and have it under three hours, which would be seven episodes, uh, which you would not, like, I'm kind of wondering if maybe we need to come back to this. Uh, and instead, uh, take a look at another piece of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, media uh and that is the live action movie which i think might actually be a interesting kind of comparison hell yeah i love the jim hits in puppet shop yeah i i would uh i would vote for the movie honestly i'm always down for watching the movie 
Yeah, I think that's what we'll do then. Uh, so, yeah, uh, in two weeks, we will return. When we return to Turtles, I think we'll be watching the movie instead. Uh, but that is not what we're going to watch next week. So before we go into what we're doing next week, uh, Carvel, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Toku underscore Carvel. And Calabunga it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool, yeah. Uh, the Let's Play group that I'm in, Low Bias Gaming at lowbiasgaming.net, and also my podcast, Square Wave Symphony, your home for video games, chip tunes, and all things weird and geeky, which can be found at lowbiasgaming.net slash squaresim, S-Y-M, or squaresim on Twitter. All right, stuff. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash portable stove. I don't really have anything quite in depth. I feel like I need to work on that now. Thanks, Coolio. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh yeah switch up slash portable stove i actually probably will be playing the first teenage mutant ninja turtles game very shortly because that's been on my backlog forever Good so the, really the only reason that i have that blurb is because the station wanted me to come up with one because i also work with a radio station here in alpha ah all right fair enough uh torpo uh twitch.tv slash torpid typist or play random crap uh like today fucking fuck axiom verge uh <laughs> and then <laughs> at torpid typist on twitter and i would like to plug up these gaping fucking caverns underneath new york this is going to be a problem <laughs> yeah um so yeah uh with that uh that brings us to the end of teenage mutant Ninja turtles so next week uh we are taking a look at a movie that i uh put in a poll because uh, one, I wanted to watch the movie again. Uh, two, uh, it is basically as close to an F zero. Well, I say as close to an F zero movie or ever and get forgetting that there's actual an F zero anime. But I feel like this one is a lot better. Gonna punch a hole in the Milky Way. Lolo, like, Lolo or, brings everybody together for a huge party because everybody wants to watch the movie. Yes, uh, we're <laughs> taking a look. At, we are watching Redline next Hell week. Hell yeah! Uh, which. Uh, is I, I I feel like it's not going to be spoilers that a lot of us are going to like this movie. The one question, how cool was it? Everyone answers, fuck yeah, podcast <laughs> over. <laughs> Pretty much. Look, just fucking slam yellow line in the tape deck and sl- just turn that shit up. Yeah, just go go listen to the yellow line until we the next episode comes up. <laughs> God, it's good. Redline is such a good but movie. you can hear our thought, hear our thoughts, and many other people's thoughts on that next week. So many people. Oh boy. Uh, so yeah, uh, that'll be fun. So that'll do it for now, though. So thank you all for listening. If you would like to look at the full list of rankings for yourself, please visit r3.ldp.life and go to the Media Delta List tab. If you would like to watch Media Delta's sister show, Retro Rank Rhapsody. You can either watch at youtube.ltp.life or by tuning into twitch.tv slash lodapuzzlo at 7.30 p.m. on Fridays, 2.30 p.m. on Saturdays, and 1 p.m. on Sundays. All those times are from the Eastern U.S. time zone. If you would like to discuss this episode with the community, you can do so by joining our Discord server, which you can do so by going to discord.ltp.life. Thank you again for listening. And I hope you tune in for our next episode.